you know, I, I, here again, I'm a bit of a contrarian in the sense that most people, when they talk about the internet, focus exclusively on the power and potential and increased connectivity. There's a dark side to the internet, which is mounting pressure on all of us. The internet, basically, in economic terms, means is a device to intensify competition, not just at the company level, but for all of us at an individual level. We're increasingly competing in a global talent market where our talents today have a diminishing shelf life. Anything we know or any skill we have today has roughly a shelf life of about five years. So if we're not continually learning and improving our performance, we're going to get marginalized. We're going to burn out and drop out. And I think the only way you, you proceed in this kind of environment as an individual is to figure out a way to connect your passion with your profession. If you're really passionate about the work you're doing, you treat this mounting pressure actually as an excitement. It means you're going to be constantly challenged to get to that next level of performance. That's exciting. It drives you to connect to others, to help you figure out how to get to that next level. Now it, what, becomes str what used to be stress now becomes an exciting opportunity. But we're all going to have to make that transition. Some of us are fortunate enough to have already integrated passion with profession. But I think the, the end result of this is that we're all going to have to make that shift and really rethink at a fundamental level what kind of work should we be doing. First of all, I do believe that everybody has the potential for passion. Uh, if you look at small children, they are by and large in inherently passionate individuals. We have a set of institutions starting with our educational system and going on with our larger work environments which are designed explicitly to squeeze that passion out of us. So by the time we get into the workforce many of us have lost a passion, we don't really have a passion. I think the challenge is to reconnect and find a passion. Now having said that I take your point that you can even with passion overdo it. You can burnout as well. I think that hinges on the ability to use the internet uh, and physical mechanisms to connect with people and build a network of friendships that go beyond, often because we're so consumed with our work, we just have friends who are in our workspace and so it becomes kind of a, an intensifying pressure on each of us because we're just trying to do more than the other person versus having a set of friends who are outside work and who can be kind of a, a, a balancing for us and say, wait a minute, you know, you're overdoing it. You need to take some time off. Let's go do something uh, that's outside of work. So I think that's another dimension, which is using the internet to create and build and sustain and expand these relationships that can help you create a little more balance beyond your work. I think certainly part of the answer is to use the technology to amplify our, our ability to connect without consuming a tremendous amount of time. So using the internet in terms of filters that filter incoming messages in ways that help us to differentiate and prioritize the ones that are really important, big deal. Opportunity to scan more effectively across a larger range of, of activities and events to find the things that are really most important for us, big deal. I think the other piece on this is that we're going to have to um, set limits for ourselves. I mean, I used to run a global practice, consulting practice. Clients everywhere from Europe to Asia and the United States, that notion of every time zone was, was a daily fact of life for me. I just had to draw limits and say this period of time on these days are just not going to be available for people outside my time zone or in, you know, at that time. I had to be very good about blocking out weekends and saying, weekends, I'm not going to get involved. Unless there's a real crisis, fine. But then I had filters, ways of determining what's a real crisis. Um, vacations, taking vacation time and really managing that so you're not connected. I don't believe we have to be connected on a vacation. I really don't. I think we've come to believe that that's, the world's going to fall apart if we're not connected during that vacation. I'm not so sure. 
I'll predict anything except the future. It's, um, I, th I think that uh, what we're going to see over the next decade is, a, frankly, a period of increasing stress in most companies. I think we're still operating with business models and practices and institutions that were developed for a previous age, the industrial era that you were talking about. The transition is not going to be an easy one. We've documented the declining profitability of all public companies in the United States, which has been going on for decades. There is no sign that is leveling off. So more pressure. I think that on the po positive side, there are going to be companies that, that emerge in a whole variety of industries that do start to harness these new technologies and new ways of connecting and develop the appropriate institutions and practices to take advantage of that that will help provide us with some landmarks in terms of here's how we could do it differently. And over time there will be a transition, but it's going to take time and I think the next decade is, is largely one of, of a painful process of questioning basic assumptions and moving to very different practices and learning together because none of us have the answer in terms of today how to use the internet to its full potential. We're all still learning.